Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and I'm finally back with part five of how I make this painting. Stick around. So I want to first start out by saying, yes, I know it's been a really long time since I've done part four, jumping into part five. Highly apologize for that, but had some other stuff going on. Uh, second thing of note, since I started this painting, a couple of colors that I've been using in it are no longer available, uh, specific, specifically a couple made by Golden. First of those is Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold. Uh, I shouted this color out at the beginning of, I think, part two or so. Uh, this is not made anymore, uh, thanks to a discontinuation of a pigment. Uh, so in order to get this as a replica, I will be using some of this in this video. Uh, but if you want to, going forward, follow along with the, uh, uh, the sort of the paint along here for this uh, and use some of the colors that I've been using. But again, uh, as I mentioned in the first few parts of this, this is not a demo. Do not copy this piece. That's plagiarism. Uh, or it is a demo. It's not a tutorial. That's what I'm meant to say. Uh, so the uh, substitute I've been using for uh, the Quinacro Nicolazo Gold is a mixture of transparent red iron oxide as well as just sort of any yellow I have around, but I've been leaning towards uh, a dialeride yellow, or I've been using this uh, Liquitex ink, which is yellow medium azo. Both of those work really well to get a color that is remarkably close uh, to this. Uh, another one that I can slash can't really use anymore is the Indian yellow hue. Now they do have a new version of Indian yellow, it's nowhere near as good. Uh, I will probably be avoiding this for the time being uh, just because I haven't found a suitable replacement yet, uh, at least in my own studio work. And the third color is uh, their Golden's Elizabeth and Crimson Hue. Again, they have a new version of it. It's not this. Uh, so I will be grabbing some other colors to work with. Have not found a replacement in my studio yet for the Elizabeth and Crimson either. Uh, so just going forward and talking about glazes, and I, again, I will be using some of the discontinued colors since I have them, uh, but for your own work and for what they do, uh, keep, keep around to the channel for whenever I figure out what I'm, I'm replacing those colors with on my palette, uh, so you can better inform yourself to make the decisions uh, to get the glazes that I'll be doing in a piece like this. So all that said, let's go ahead and get back to painting. Okay, so picking up right where we left off last time, I had just finished up some of my highlights, starting to put a little bit of the darks in, but nothing too crazy. Uh, since this painting's actually been sitting in my corner for a little while, a couple of little things I need to fix right off the bat. There's a speck here that got a little bit of paint on it. You probably can't really tell, but it is there. And there's a small fleck of orange right here, which I'm going to rectify immediately. Actually, the, that one I can probably let pass for a little while. A bit of orange I can fix with just a little bit of my premix brown right there. That'll hide that for the time being. So the first color I'm going to grab today, uh, oh yeah, before I get uh, too far in, uh, glass palette off to the side, a little bit of a cut off on this side, but I'll try to avoid mixing over here. Bucket of warm water just off camera, my uh, rags over here. So it may end up moving to the right side in a little bit. And the first brush I grabbed today is a uh, Utrecht Tuscan series angle. And the first color I'm grabbing is a sort of what you might call my secret weapon for uh, painting shadows and, and, and dark colors. And that is a color by Golden called Smalt Hue. Smalt is a really fascinating color because it is a transparent uh, mixed pigment blue, which dries to be very, very matte. It's also extremely low tinting. So I tend to not mix it with other colors. I just use it as a glaze out of the tube. And whatever color is underneath it, it really, when it dries, brings it to life uh, just through uh, the transparency and glaze of the color itself. Uh, so I will start with a little blob of this on my palette. Yeah, maybe more of a medium blob of this on my palette. I use this color all the time. So from, from my studio, it's always nice to have a, a decent stock of it. I'm just going to load up this brush and start filling my shadows out a bit more. Any, anything that had I've, some of that overlap with the white, or the white mix, I should say. I can start pulling that around. I should 
probably this make a difference for you guys. Oh, it absolutely will. Makes a difference for you, makes a difference for me. I gotta tilt that so I'm not getting the glare. So anywhere that I, I kind of overpaint it a little bit, then I can pull the rest of that shadow in. Same thing too with the uh, anything that's like perfectly like it's like really black, like too black almost. I'll start pulling this color into it as well to bring in a little extra, I guess you could say, luminosity to the whole thing. Even create shadows within shadows. And I'll say for the dark section on this side, you probably aren't going to be able to see the vast majority of what I'm doing here. I'm really just focused on like that little blob cleaning up some uh, cleaning up some of my mistakes as well as um, bringing in again just that little bit of extra color in, in the utilizing the glaze. But most of that's just in the shadow anyway. Plus, with the uh, you know blue on black like this, uh, you run into the ability to also add a little extra texture this late in the game, which is always really nice. All right, now the side you're actually probably going to notice. Um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of, and I'm really loading the brush up too. I, I'm not afraid to to really kind of slap this color around. Um, I'm not using a ton of it over here, more so, but. It's, it is more sparing. I don't want to completely cover all of the, uh, the color brush work that I did before. But this does allow me to, uh, to, to break up that super stark black. Or anywhere that I was using black uh, for those shapes. And this way as well when someone looks at the piece and, and says, wow, you didn't use black for shadows. I'll be like, actually, I did. I just glazed some blue over it so you couldn't tell. You can always extend it a little bit beyond that, but especially in here, like I'll give this a bit more right where this shadow meets, you know. And you might say, but Ben, it's going to be blue now. It's like, no, we're going to glaze some oranges back in. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is sort of the last 10% of this piece. It's, it's the last push to kind of, I mean, it, it's pretty close as it is. But, you know, it just needs a little extra finessing to really kind <clears> of <throat> bring it up to the quality, the quality level of other work that I produce. I actually ran into this issue lately. I don't want to say issue, but um, it came up in my professional circle <clears throat> that I'm finding that I, because my, because I as a person have matured, and my work has as well, I would say, to some degree, from where I was, you know, even five or six years ago, I'm finding that it's, it's uh i say this as loosely as I can because this is still a uh, tutorial type piece or video. <laughs> uh, it's time for me to find some venues that are more akin to my professional um, skill level and quality. I've been frequenting a lot of festival type venues and while those are, can be <coughs> quite lucrative. They do limit the crowds of people that come to enjoy the work. <clears throat> okay, that's probably about all I'm going to do with the small, at least for the time being. Whoops. Probably going to pull a little bit into the foreground in a bit, but, or even right now. But for the time being, I think that's good. Okay. 
Next is going to be a series of glazes. Now, I did talk early on with this piece about leaning things a little bit more orange. And that's where we're going to have some fun now. So I'm going to grab that uh, Nicolazo Gold for two reasons. One, I really love what it does when I do mix it with the smalt. Creates this brownish green color, which is going to add a lo lot more complexity to everything. I will toss some of the transparent red oxide on that palette as well, since I am supplementing with it. And since we're leaning orange, I'm going to mess with, actually, I have some homemade liquid cadmium uh, yellow. So I'm going to use some of that. And then probably a red to offset just a little bit of that. I have a, uh, oh, not that one, open parole red dark that I've been uh, leaning on for a lot of different things lately. It's a very opaque red, but should be I should I shouldn't be using a ton of it. It's just a little bit to bring a little extra warmth into that as needed. Okay. I'm gonna keep things loose and wet. A little of that smalt in there. Makes it just makes it a touch more brown. And thin it out. And I'll start in the background because that was the sort of the goal in the first place was to make that a lot more orange back there. I will get that overlap in a bit, but See, I'm curious what that would do over. Oh yeah, that's going to be way better. I'm going to pull that over the sky as well. Because that's, that's really pink compared to what I've got. Yeah, and this orange is a lot closer to what I had in mind originally. And just like that, we've completely changed that color of that, uh, of that sky, light source, what have you. That's why I really love glazes, and I'm so glad I kind of... Uh, a friend of mine kind of really taught me to use them more effectively is because doing stuff like that, I'm probably just going to paint over the whole piece now with, with this. Um, yeah, just come over the rocks, everything. Yep, I'm just going to do the whole thing. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll stick with the direction of my underlying brush stroke so it has some level of uniformity. Now, sometimes I'll do this with an oil coat to finish. Um, but I do find that, you know, sticking with the same acrylic for this, uh, it really helps. Yeah, we're really completely changing the hue of the piece overall, which, uh, you know, from the, you know, first moment I started, um, may, uh, surprise a lot of you, but, uh, you know, that, that ch that ability to change and you know change your mind and keep working a little bit at a time to help the piece really transform into something uh, more than just uh, and I got to be honest this, this piece is in compositionally a little bit plain uh, by comparison to a lot of stuff that I do normally um, part of the reason why it's taken me as long as it has to get back to it is just because I honestly kind of lost interest in it. Uh, normally when a, that happens with me in a piece, I scrap it and start over, but considering this is a whole video series, I can't really do that. Uh, actually have to commit and finish it. Um, yeah, I'll start pulling a little bit more of that red in for the, the edges here. Just warmer tones on the, on the back side of that. And kind of mix that back so you actually see a nice, more simple transition. Really warm that the whole piece up. Which is good. It, it needed something. Like it were, we were just kind of dry with, with, with uh, what was there.
Yeah, that feels good. I have a little bit of streakiness with the unevenness of the paint here. I'm going to actually model that with a, take a Kleenex and just kind of dab a little. So I can pull up some of that underlying color as well. Creates a, a marbled effect. Do that over here a little bit too to balance things out. Yeah, looks good. All right. Back to the orange. Orange. Touch the blue. Little yellow. Yeah, and then start filling that color out down here. This will also really make uh, any further additions of white really just pop out even more so than they already were. Pull that down here. Maybe even leave the shadow side almost untouched pull a blue glaze in here to, to offset that more. I might let that go a minute. And you can see what I mean at this point with, with the blue that I added. It didn't drastically shift anything. It just added something a little bit more subtle. Too much paint on the brush there really pull that around. Yeah, for the, like the last final layer, I'll come in with just black and just white, or just, uh, actually probably just the Titan buff, with a liner brush just to really kick everything up a notch. And bring those, those bright whites back in. I'm going to keep the, the shadows actually darker there. And here. I'll just take it up to a point. Like up here it's made it more brown, which is still fine. Still keeping the shadows cooler, I think, is going to be a better choice. Okay, so I probably should have done this as I was working here, but uh, can, we can just do it now. I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white. Whoops, there go my knives. And a bit of glazing liquid. I know I am glazing, but I the white is very um, opaque, so I gotta I gotta cut that with something. My other knife. I don't know where I put my other knife. It's here somewhere. It's gone now. <laughs> Seriously? Oh well, I'll find it later. Gotta, gotta stick with this while it's wet. Just grab a different knife. Um, so, a little bit of white in the glazing liquid. And yellow and a touch of that orange. We are going to make those streaks of light. I'm going to grab just a hint of that white to start. I did really want to keep that brighter on this edge. There we are, and then emanating this way. Oh, grab that glaze. And just probably should be using a softer brush for this, but that's okay. 
pull those streaks of light out subtly. Not over that though. Just a little. Directional lines, kind of the way I want them. Yep. Simple, small, subtle, but right there. That's all I'm going to do with that. All right, now I do need to find that knife. Okay, it took me about 10 minutes of backtracking and Remembering that I spilled my knives on the floor a few minutes ago to realize it was on the floor where I spilled them. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of that smalt that I had before. Mix just a little bit of that red in. Hopefully not, tr trying not to overpower it too, too much. And with that, I'm going to do that glaze, but with the darks so where, where I didn't necessarily want that orange. I'll come back in that violet tone. That way it's still getting the glaze treatment and things won't look off. Allows, again, allows you to kind of hide your imperfections a little. And I will use that, I believe, up front here as well. Just use up the rest of that. with some red. A little bit of that orange right at the top to help unify that. Okay. That feels pretty good. That really helped uh, <clears throat> even things out, bring a lot of that to life. That orange just really makes everything pop. I really love that. So from here we get into, I would say, the last little bit of de detail. So I'm actually going to rinse my brush as well as get some new water since we're a little bit brown here. And I'm just going to be focusing on, uh, I'm going to grab my uh, titanium buff and some Mars Black, and just work with those two colors. Okay, so I've opted for a smaller vessel of water. The Titan Buff and Mars Black also scraped over the uh, Titanium White that I had left. These colors I will be using pretty much straight out of the tube, and for that reason I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you guys. And this is the last detailing phase. This is just give it a little extra finesse, make those lights and darks just pop the rest of the way, Really build that contrast up, and I'll be tossing in my figures, as well as my signature, which I still have this color off to the side, which I'll be mixing up for that in a little bit. So at this point now, again, it really is just a little bit of final work. I'm thinning that uh, Titan buff down out with my liner, getting a more fluid paint. Now I do have the, this color in high flow, but I do like the little bit of inconsistency you get when, when thinning out a heavy body. You kind of get a little bit more globs of paint here and there. Yeah, so from here, I can just pull a little detail in, just kind of letting that brush glide around and find some interesting shapes. So I'll, I'll drag with the brush, I'll blend with my finger a little. So I don't want it to be crazy detailed, but just enough to 
make things jump a little. Any, anywhere that I kind of had some details planned or, or where things came up, like these little pillars that weren't originally planned, but they just happened to work with the composition, so I kind of did that with them. Put a little extra line, a few extra lines in here. Bring that up. Just really minimally tossing those in. Just where I want a little extra light. I don't want to overpower what I did with the glaze either, because I definitely could. In fact, I may even grab a little bit of that left and mix it in with the Mix it in with the Titan buff to, to maintain that. It's still br it's still bright. I don't want to offset the color. Yeah, that's much better actually. And at this point, any places of more heavy contrast is right where uh, the viewer is going to look. Too much there. So really kind of, you know, building up, you know, where I want those focal points with, with the contrast. And being able to kind of lead the viewer's eye around the piece with that extra, those extra lines. Turn this a little bit. Mind the angle. But I really need really need the brush to flow here. I can't do that at that angle. That's better. more drag strokes here to really spread that around. I think that's pretty good for the white. The black in this case is going to be even more sparing. For the same reason I did all that work with the blue um, to make it, you know, avoid having like the, the stark black color show up in this piece at all, but it's still going to be there a little bit, of course. And this really lets me just kind of, and, and again, because we, we brought up those, those um, tones a lot more with the blues and the reds, this black is actually going to stand out even more than it would otherwise be on the dark background. Wait, microphone. Sort of the, at this point, it's my last my last push to define some shapes. 
and like like this line here, like this is going to be barely visible, even up close. But it subconsciously will get your eye to to separate where those two rocks are. little bit with it but trying to keep things minimal. Those extra those extra little blobs of contrast just to make everything pop. Still finding places to kind of put a little bit in here. Actually feels pretty good. Honestly, I, I I have been dreading working on this piece, but you know, as soon as I did that orange that orange um, glazing layer, everything kind of my interest seems to have been rekindled. Sometimes you just need a little extra bit of a color shift to find uh, something you really love about a piece. And this piece definitely was that. It, it, it really just needed that, uh, that glaze push to, to bring everything to life. And sometimes you, don't, sometimes you don't know that that's what it needs. You're just like, all right, I don't like this. Let's do something drastic, you know? And that's often how it goes. Okay, so now on to the signature element for me, besides my you know, actual signature. The one thing in my work that people, whether online or in person, look for for every single piece that I make, even though they're not always there, and that are my figures. Which actually for the first time since I started this painting, the brush to canvas part of it, I need to look at my sketch, because I don't know where the people were. Okay, right in here. It's kind of where I thought, but wanted to double check. For my, so my little people are basically just stick figures that happen to work really nicely in, in silhouette. Usually, usually start with the legs as just like a, uh, an N or, you know, an arc. And then straight up and down for the head and shoulders, just kind of fill out like that. This guy's really tall. <laughs> maybe he's a creature of some kind that is really tall. Or maybe he's just Andre the Giant. Who knows? I'll, just make, I'll make the other guy real big, too. So. It, off, it, it uh, offsets, but... Um, balances, rather. Because I'm using thinned out uh, heavy body, there's a little bit of transparency in the color, which is allowing some of the lighter tones beneath the figures to really stand out. These shadows aren't going to show up super well, but they should at least a little bit on our darker foreground. The perspective of the shadows are directly uh, related to where the light's coming from. I do if, if there's if there was a sun, the sun would be the focal point, and I'd pull the shadows from there. That looks pretty good. That gave everything a little bit of scale. Now there's just one thing left to do, but mix up a color for my signature. Actually, there's a noticing a color issue here. 
somewhere I traced over a little too much. It's important to step back and figure out where your mistakes were before you finally sign it. In theory, I could probably go through and give it a little bit more finessing detail, but I'm actually quite happy with where it turned out. Um, Sorry, not the best piece I've ever done, but uh, I think for a build this up from scratch for, for a, a, a video, I think I did okay. All right, so I'm going to mix. I don't want to use red, although it would thematically work. I tend to reserve red for, pa uh, for paintings I'm very, very confident about or for a grayscale painting to make my signature pop. There's like the only two times I use red when I'm signing. So I'm going to I'm going to use the red to mix an orange to make it just a little bit more chromatically orange than the a lot of the backdrop stuff. And we'll grab just a little bit of that Titan buff to make it pink. A little more of the Quinn Nicolazo in that. So it doesn't look like the original background, but it is kind of close. And that same deal, we'll get a little bit of water into that and thin it out. And for the first time in a long time, I almost always sign on the right, but compositionally, there's a lot of empty space here. So I'm absolutely going to be signing on the left today. Well, what month is it now? It is, it is, it is actually July. It's the 1st of July today. But I'm actually going to sign this as June. Like, why? You finished it in July. But I did the vast majority of the work on it in, in June. Um, and I have a few pieces in mind for this month. So I'm definitely going to sign this one as June instead of July. Little bit of a cheat, but no one will ever know unless they've watched this video. One thing that's really uh, good to practice, especially if you're signing your name, and uh, like, like, like I do, I sign it Ben Yaqua, I sign it as my name, rather than a symbol or initials. Uh, I've, a couple of years ago, I've managed to break down my signature into individual strokes, so I can do it one letter at a time, and it looks really consistent. Especially when I need to go back and dip for paint, or, or clean up the lines a little. I mean, if I'm using pencil or, you know, like a paint marker or something, which I actually do really like to do is use a paint marker to sign uh, for certain pieces, especially ones on a much larger scale, then I obviously don't have to dip back for paint. But um, again, like here, the Y needs a little extra, little extra paint, so I can kind of just come back in with that. And we are fake June. And that is how I make a painting. So that's it. We can finally call this done. Uh, so this is Breach the Labyrinth, my uh, original uh, acrylic painting for uh, June of 2023. Uh, again, not compositionally my best work, but uh, threw it together for a video. So it feels like uh, at least that's uh, relatively successful. And uh, once again, top to bottom, I've said this multiple times, uh, at least once already in this video, this series is not intended for you to make a copy of this painting. This is my original work. Do not copy this piece. This series is about following along with my techniques. Uh, hopefully, if you're going to do a piece similar to this, but not this exact composition or exact color, um, you can take these techniques that I've talked about throughout my process and use them in your own work to better your work and to make more interesting pieces and unique pieces as well. And that was really the point of this. If you want to get a hold of this painting yourself, it will be up for sale on my website, cinderblockstudios.com slash shop, uh, as soon as this video goes live. So it should already be there. Uh, now, the only thing, final thing that left I have to do with this piece, uh, I'm not going to do it on camera. I've shown it before in a lot of vlogs, is every piece that I finish uh, usually gets a triple coat of gloss um, sealer uh, that is done to unify surface sheen. So it's like some of the paint's glossy, some of the paint's more matte. That just makes everything glossy. 
And personally, I find that a gloss coat to any piece, uh, whether it be a varnish or a clear coat like I use, really just makes all of the dark colors pop even more than they already do. It just, um, yeah, it just, just brings everything like all, all the darks, the, the blacks, the blues, really anything in that, that lower uh, shade spectrum of, of uh, color value really just makes everything pop. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this in-depth look on the process from start to finish, from sketch to final signature of how I make a painting. If you guys have been following along since part one, uh, it's a long process in the very beginning. Canvas prep, the sketches, all of that. The actual painting process probably takes only about half the time as, as the sketches do. Uh, and that's really the, the core, core and goal of every piece that I do is to have a good enough foundational idea that I'm not fighting with it when I bring it to canvas. If you enjoyed this video and this series, go ahead and hit the like button and let me know your thoughts in comments below. If you want to see me do more in-depth pieces like this, also let me know. I tend to not. I reserve that for the vlogs most likely, most likely, most of the time. Um, but I do, I did find that I really enjoyed just slowly talking through my process like this. So if that's something you want to see more of, let me know. Additionally, if you learned anything new and useful about how to apply any of my techniques to your own work, let me know about that too, because that would be, I think, an interesting conversation to have. I think there's a lot of stuff that I do that's really subconscious, so I think seeing it, especially in a demo, can really help you guys out uh, in the long run. Sometimes just having someone there demoing it for you, step by step, can actually make a pretty big difference, at least, I, at least in my opinion, anyway. So that's going to be it for this video and this series. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. Be sure to check out me out in the social links in the description box below, including the community Discord, where you can meet and chat with, with other artists and uh, talk about your work and share your work and all that fun stuff and, and talk to me too on, on, uh, on occasion. Uh, keep on creating, get subscribed if you're not already. Like button is always important too. Uh, and this has been Cinderblock Studios reminding you to keep on creating and I will see you guys next time. It's really not a bad piece. Just took me way too long to finish it. <laughs>